Alrighty guys, thank you for stopping back into the crazy channel where we have Saturday Night Live type skits sometimes. Sometimes we have all Mustang content. Sometimes we have things other than Mustangs like those bow tie things, you know. I like my trucks. I, I like my truck. It's, it's a good truck. Anyway, enough blibber blabber. Blabble. I am working on this today. Let me show you. That convertible top motor has not worked since uh, probably 95, 95, 96 is when it went out. So what happened, one of my hoses busted and all the fluid left and the motor may have got burned up whenever I was realizing that one of the hoses had busted. I don't remember, but anyway, I've been trying to do some test wiring. Um, what I did here, I took this plug, which is, that's the main plug. It comes out of these two relays right here. And it's basically like a six way plug. But I unplugged it and I put positive wire here grounded it with that ground down there I've done all kinds of stuff and I hear absolutely no sound coming out of it so I'm thinking that motors fried we're gonna pull it completely out and hit these wires again and see if we can get something else to happen with it out of the car just because I don't like sparks flying around in my car but that's what's gonna happen we're gonna pull it out all right I pulled the motor out it's not that hard to get out you do have one ground wire it's grounded right there I had to pull that off that went there other than that it's um you have to do these were a half inch fittings one for your uh, up and one for down I suppose one on each side of the motor they go in those little holes right there all right look I've never never had this thing out before there's where you put your fluid in it requires type a transmission fluid this thing was tested and inspected by 3c on 5 22 1986 is when this motor was inspected all right guys here's what I'm doing bench test I got my um my battery charger down there on the floor I got it set up to push a full 12 volts and whenever I, um I can hear it humming here's something to remind myself I'm going I pulled this uh flathead screwdriver pulled out the ground wire the bolt with the ground wire it was next to them wires so when I put it back together I'm gonna make sure this one goes over here probably wouldn't matter where I grounded it but I'm gonna do that just because that's the way it came all right guys enjoy the music that uh royalty free music from bensound.com what I'm doing here is I'm popping that head off and I didn't want y'all to have to watch an hour's worth of video so I triple speeded a bunch of this um, taking it apart there's a bolt right there you have to get off channel locks because it's a three-sided bolt it's not a six-sided hex head that takes off your reservoir and then there's five more bolts in there I believe to be seven sixteenths I popped those bolts I was noticing how rusty two of them were which was not a good sign there's two little ball valves I'm pointing out right there with the screwdriver and uh, I think that one goes up one goes down it's like a little toggle uh, seesaw type switch and that's what sends the fluid outside and uh, yeah, start popping those 7 16 bolts loose. And this is all the mechanical side of the motor. I've never taken this thing apart, never seen a video about it anywhere. So I decided to take it apart. I had nothing to lose, right? If it didn't work, it didn't work. I was going to buy one. If, it, if I get it to work, I, I get it to work. But you can see some junk. There's a little gear right there that, uh, that should be turning. So I thought there's two ball bearings inside that valve. Uh, inside the, the two little holes you see with the little drippy spots there and then here I am on the um, the electronic side where the magnets and the motor all the windings are um, I got I pulled that out of the housing it came out pretty easy and that shaft sticks in I found these two little gears and I guess they're called the spider gear see one's inside the other those things were rusted and corroded up is what the problem was. I couldn't get it to spin and I was looking at the way that was made. It was like an old spirograph toy where one's got less teeth than the other one and that thing could spin around in there and rotate a, um, a little bearing that was part of the spin. Like it is, like I say, I think that gear is jammed inside that. If you can see it both sides, there's your outside and that little square slot. If you can see it's got a square slot on it, that goes on the square slot on this which tells me that yes these two should turn separate if they're not turning separate then that's probably an issue so we're gonna take this we're gonna beat and fram and do stuff and see if we can get it loose okay guys what I did is I have managed to get this loose 
See that right there? Now it's two separate pieces. This one turns inside that one, but it should be rotating around. It should be able to roll around in there, you know, like an offset gear. And what I'm looking at is there's a bunch of gunk built up on these teeth and that's keeping it from spinning. So I'm gonna clean it up, get my wire brush out, clean that up, clean the inside of this one, see if I can get those rotating. Maybe we can get this thing spinning. And I put a uh, little grinding wheel on a uh, grinding wire brush on my drill and just worked that off. Uh, the internal gear first and then I took the screwdriver and scraped out the other one and uh, cleaned them up real good carburetor cleaner and brake cleaner all right y'all see that I'll show you something I'm gonna do it from the back side see how that now spins inside of itself and it's doing this wow 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 it's doing a nice little vibration a while ago it was so gunked up that it couldn't do that so now that I know that right there spinning free. I don't know if that was causing the back pressure on that motor and that's why the motor weren't turning or is it the fact that these brushes and all of the uh, electronic components of the motor are what's jacked up. So I'm gonna try and put it back together, see if it turns, see if I save myself $200. And here I am putting it back together. Um, the mechanical side's real easy. Those five bolts will only go one way. They did offset them so you can only put it on one way which is the correct way. Um, the, I put two little ball bearings in there then you have the shaft on this end, you have to put the ball bearing in the end of it. And getting those motors together, not fun. It took me about three or four different tries to get the magnets. You gotta keep them squeezed, slide them onto one small shaft, then expand them onto a bigger shaft, and that's the hardest part of this whole process. And I knew it was gonna be was getting those, then you put your two big long flat head bolts that hold the whole thing, clamp it together, back in, and here we go again. Outside of this guy. Okay. And it's turning. Oh my gosh. It worked. Woo! I just saved more money than Geico can save me. Listen. It's actually turning. What it was, that little worm gear in there was rusted up where it hadn't turned in so long. So now all I've got to do, put my seal back on, put the bolt, this long bolt back through the reservoir. Give me a line kit and the hydraulics should be good. If not, I'll buy me some hydraulics and line kit, but the motor is good. That's how you rebuild a motor. Hardest part of this is getting those little, um, the bushings, the little magnets and all back on that. And you have to kind of get them on the small, small rod first and then reach down in between there, in between your uh, housing and the end cap with a screwdriver and pull them apart to get them on top of the other magnets. And that's it. But that's what it was, guys. I cannot believe I fixed this motor. Wow, that's awesome. Now I'm gonna get some type A, type A transmission fluid put in here and uh, get me some new lines. I know I got to get new lines, run to my hydraulics and we'll go from there and see what happens. But there it is. Or uh, I'll probably do this in a little series. This will be like a part one here or there. I might do some car stuff in between, who knows? As um, long as the quarantine's going, I'm going to be doing this little stuff, just trying to get these little things that don't work. I mean, that, that top gets really heavy. Me and my wife, usually I can put it up by myself, but with uh, me and her, uh, usually that's how we do it. But yeah, that's it. I got this motor working. Can you believe that? I can't, because I mean, I, I hate wiring. But it was all in that little gear down there was corroded up. So if your gear's good and everything's good, you know, I'm going to make sure I torque these down and uh, put my reservoir on, put me some type A in there, and that, that type A goes in there or there, depending on which way the uh, motor, that little motor spins it. And that's all that little motor gear does is force oil up through one of these or the other, and that sends it out to either this, this side or this side. It's a pretty awesome deal. I am very, very happy. Appreciate everybody watching. God bless you all till part two of this or till the next time I run across a cool car. Peace.